G'day, I just thought I'd share a few quick tips on um, the Firmzilla. Uh, I know a lot of people have been having issues getting things undone or tightening. I don't actually undo this whole thing when I clean, unless I think there's a reason to. Uh, even my uh, old Fermentosaurus, I never undid all this section here. Um, if you have a reason, you think you're getting infections or something because of it, you can do it. But I find uh, that if you just give it a good clean, that there's no real need to do it. I do take the bottom collection vessel off, of course. Uh, there's a few tips with that. Lube. Really use a lot of lube. It's not just to help the seal. It will help you get it undone at the end or during the ferment when you're going to dry hop. Uh, talking about... Uh, dry hopping, there was a little idea I had, um, and it was simply, I got a few of these, these are just like a plastic version of the carb caps, uh, I would nearly did a video on these about a week ago, but then they'd sold out on the Kegland site, and as I record this, I think the stainless ones are going up again today, so hopefully you'll be able to get a stainless one, but these plastic ones are fine too. Now, when you put screw these onto here you see that there's no reason if you're under fermenting still when and i usually am when i add my hops my dry hops I, I never add them after the end of the ferment it's always some sort of ferment going on when i add them i think it works better in all uh all fermenters not just these sort of fermenters to dry hop before the beers finish fermenting there's no reason why you couldn't run a gas line have your hops in the bottom, you know, and to flush it, you could use the gas out of the fermentation, just a gas line to gas line, and use that. You could put a um, some sort of valve, like your uh, blow tie valve, if you wanted to, on the other side, or you could just loosen the lid off, because you'll only have hops in there and air, and you'll have the CO2 coming from the ferment and going through your hops. You might only have to leave it, at, you know, leave it an hour, an hour or two. Uh, depending on the, how rigorous your ferment is, and that'll flush that out without having to use your gas bottle. Or if you don't have a gas bottle, you could use that same method uh, to flush your hops. Okay, I normally wouldn't do this. I've pulled this out of the fridge. No, I'm now likely to drop it or something. So I usually do this in the fridge, but it's really hard to video doing stuff in the fridge. This has only been in for 22 hours on the quiet heavy yeast um but the krausen's dropped i can hear the f gas flow co2 flow out is slowed right down so it's ne it's nearly done in, it's only a small beer four and a half 4.3 4.5 and a half percent um but i'm going to try and dry hop through the bottle i should just put it in the top but um uh, because that's what i normally do but I thought I'd show the methods that you can use for the bottom. There we go. If you're going to keep your use yeast, you'd put the lid on straight away. If some more yeast in a normal ferment, like with a sapphire or something like that, you'd have a fair bit of yeast build up here. So when you take it off, you could collect that yeast. With this type of yeast, you actually don't get much uh, residue or tube or yeast cake is probably the best word out of the quite yeast Brevik, however you want to pronounce it than you do compared to other yeasts well at least I don't anyway but anyway without talking too much let's do this I want to get this back in the ferment fridge so turn it off and make sure you're off that's right I'm gonna get my tool I'm not gonna to have to do it from this back side or you're not gonna see anything We'll see how we go. This is going to get messy. I didn't let the pressure out, which I should have done. Hang on, I'm going to reopen that. I'm going to let some pressure out the top. Not enough to let air in, but just enough to let some pressure out. Now I can shut it. Try and undo it. Oh, it's coming. Here we go. I did really lube this up well. The threads and everything yesterday, so it will be easier. So 
gonna get messy. Now if you wanted to keep that, you'd simply pull that out and put the lid on. I'm gonna protect, pull it out and put the lid on just so I can take it to the fridge, I mean to the sink, and wash it out. Oh, and it smells good. And what I'd normally do, which is probably not really 100% necessary, is just give that a spray with some star sand, or your, this is actually the Stella sand or whatever it is. Just to clear any junk out. Not 100% necessary probably, but it won't hurt. As I said, you could collect this, you could tip this into another jar, you could tip it straight into a starter and get another batch going. For this experiment, since I'm trying to be fast, for you guys, I'm just going to tip it out. I've taken one of those lids off, screw one of these carb caps in. Make sure it's nice and tight. I am going to spray with star sand. It's probably no, this is a bit of overkill. At the same time, I've got a brand new clean tea towel. I'm just going to try and wipe some of that liquid out. I don't want it all in there. But again, I'm probably being overkill. It looks a bit mangy. I've got a lot of lube on the outside of this jar that's um, making it all look a bit grubby. I've got my hops here. I've only got foil over it because it's been so windy in the garage and I've been mucking around. I don't want sticks and leaves falling in it. There's 150 grams worth of hops, 50 grams of citra, 50 grams of mosaic and 50 grams of amarillo. This is going to be a single dry hop. And screw that back in. If I can get it back in. Yeah, and it shouldn't be using that to you don't have to over tighten these if you've got enough lube and stuff on it should be right by hand tight if not I'll nip it up later now it's a bit hard for me to spin this round now I've put those rubber things on so let me just spin this round so you can see it maybe there's a few ways you can flush this. Of course, you could put your gas bottle straight on there, your CO2 bottle. Now, I've got a line set up. Mine's beer to beer, but these fittings are universal. If you happen to be using fittings that aren't universal, then you'll need gas to gas, or gas to whatever fits your disconnect down there. I'm just gonna stick that on there, and this has got a little bit of star sand in it. I don't want coming through. This is just to the gas post and I can put that on the side of the hops. I can get it on there, like that. Sorry I didn't realise my light was in front of the phone. And then just undo this knob, this little little. You can hear the gas coming out. Don't know if you can, I can. I can leave that there. This has got a fair bit of gas coming out at the moment. Yeah, it's up to you what you think. 15 minutes, half an hour, one hour. With this rate, I reckon that'd be purged pretty quickly, as much as you're gonna get. Or if you don't wanna do it that way, and you can do that, as I said, you don't even need a CO2 bottle to do that. So if you're somehow bottling from this without a CO2 bottle, etc. You can still ferment under pressure and still dry hop without introducing oxygen that way. Or of course, you can't quite see it here, you can use a CO2 bottle. Um, I'm gonna just set it down to about, I don't know, it takes a few, a few pounds. You can hook that up. And you can do the same thing. Now you can, if you want to leave it here for a while, you could, instead of just unscrewing it, you could put on your uh, butterfly 
or your blow tie valve thing, but it's probably not really necessary. But you could. How long you do that, your guess is as good as, as, good as mine. Um, I was thinking about a few different things. I was going to put an elbow on the on the inlet, so it, and a little bit of tube, so it goes right down to the bottom to force the oxygen up and out the top. But you know, we're probably being a little bit anal. Anyway, I think that's going to be enough. I'll just give it another shot, just in case. Let's go, eh? So we're in. It's a bit hard to see in this murky work, but I can see there's hops floating around. There's still a couple down the bottom, but there's a ton up the top here. And if ever you do get stuck, you used to get stuck in the um, Fermentosaurus. You put a bit of pressure in the top using your gas bottle. Then you close the valve, you let the pressure out the top. And then when you open that valve, because this is pressurized more than the top, it, everything shoots up out of it. And it's a good way of trying. You can see the dry hops up here now. So now I'm, I'm, now I'm just going to put this back in the fridge. It's at 30 degrees, I might bump it up a couple of degrees, slowly build it up to 35 over the next few days, and this will be done in a couple of days. I also saw someone else, I'm not sure who it was, I couldn't find the post again, use a, you know, a drink bottle thing, lid, just for help to clean, and he put it on there, because it fits the thread, um, and he'd had, he did put a silicon hose over it, and I think he was somehow recircing or flushing it through uh, that way. You know, these are just ideas. You might come up with something that, that it's, it's useful for. You wouldn't be, I wouldn't be using that under pressure like that. It would probably end up uh, opening if, it was got, if the pressure got too much. But just for cleaning, or uh, you might figure out some sort of bottling mechanism through that. You might take that off and cut the hose off and cut the end off and um, put a bit of hose on there. These are all ideas. There was another idea I saw online just recently, and it, it's, it sounds like a good idea. Again, I haven't tried it. I might try it right now. Even when this is full, and you're trying to move it around, it slides around on these steel things because they're you know hard and shiny. So what this person did was got some hoses. This is just an old hose. Well, I think it was off an old um, siphon. It's not much good for anything else at the moment. Just cut it like that, I guess. It would be it'd probably be a bit easier with a Stanley knife, but standing here doing it on camera, I'd probably end up cutting my finger off. If you had some smaller silicon hose, it'd probably work as well, of course. So I've split that, and of course you just feed it over the. You probably need to tape it down in places. Now I did a pretty dodgy job there, just for the camera, but as you can see, once I secured that down with some sticky tape or cable ties or something, probably not cable ties, maybe a bit of sticky tape. Okay, I've done that, a bit of a rough job, and this um, tubing I'm using is, as you can tell, it's yellowed and it's old and it's not really flexible. It's probably not a good one to use, but um, I've just given it a trial run for now, and if I, if I like it, I'll go and buy some newer tube. Now that's made a difference already. I can see like the whole stand's turning now instead of just the fermenter or the firmzilla turning. So there you go, eh? I might have to get some better pipe and do a little bit better job. But I tell you what, it's working. So anyway, there's a couple of tips. One that, uh, which was one I thought of, which is you can use your actual ferment CO2 to flush your hops. Um, the other one with a drink bottle lid, I don't know what you could use that for, but uh, it's just good to remember that every time you see a different lid that's got a PET type thread that you could put it on there and potentially use it, as I said, even just for cleaning or come up with your own um, bottling solution if you're not uh, doing it under gas from the top. So that's it. 
thank you to whoever I saw do this first. If you leave your name down there, I'll try and highlight you. I'll try and remember to thank you in another video. Um, I'm not sure. It's been on a few forums. I'm not sure who was first. It was in Facebook, and then I saw it on other forums. And Anyway, it doesn't really matter. I'm just passing on the infos to you. I'm not claiming to have uh, come up with some of these. But uh, all right, there's a few tips. As soon as I uh, find out some more, I'll let you know. Lube, 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 lube those seals, lube those threads. Cheers. Just talking lubes. That's the Kegland one. But you know, if you're stuck and you haven't got one, and you're not getting an order from Kegland or any other home brew shop, these ones from the hardware shop, I think this one was from Bunnings. Um, these all should be food grade. Tap lubricant, sealant, the stuff. Well, not sealant. But um, this one would have food grade written on the packet. I did when I bought it. Just make sure. But any of those tap, washer, lubricants will do the job. And don't be shy. You can use a lot. It doesn't matter. Try to keep it on, <laughs> not in there, but you know, around the seal and on, on the threads fine. It doesn't matter. Now I've just screwed that back on. I've put some pressure in there. It's quite a lot of pressure actually, more than I'd ferment with. There's about 18 PSI or something in there. I only ferment with about 10 usually, 10 or under. I can see I'm not leaking from the jar I've just screwed back on. Plenty of lube on it and on the thread. And I also often put my stars in it. I'm just about to fill this, but you can turn it upside down and it's a quick way to see if you are leaking from anywhere rather than trusting your ear or... <clears throat> I mean, if you've got a big enough bucket, we can stick it in the bath if you want. Look for bubbles. You'll know pretty soon. That's all fine. There's no leaks there. Because when you're under pressure like this, you'll know nearly straight away if you've got a leak. Alright, that means we're ready to go. There's many brews where I don't even take this off. Um, if it's just a regular brew, I, I leave it on there till the end. Sometimes I don't even shut it. A lot of the times I don't shut it, I just leave it open. It's really up to you how you want to use it. There's no right or wrong way. That's what I wanted to mention. When you're under pressure and fermenting under pressure, it doesn't matter if it's 5 PSI or 10 PSI or 20 PSI. When you're going to want to take this bottle off uh, before you shut it and unscrew it, let the pressure out the top as much as you can. You don't want to start letting the air in. But you'll find your beer will start foaming up um, and producing more CO2. So you keep going, keep going. There's still air, positive pressure in there coming out. Then turn it off and then undo that straight away. Otherwise, that'll keep fermenting, you'll get pressure. Um, there's been a few pictures of people and they've ended up covered in hops and their fridges have ended up covered in hops because of the pressure. There still will be a bit of a mess because um, that'll be carbonated and slightly pressurized. But there's not much you can do about that. Um, I've been covered before when cleaning. I forgot when cleaning that I had pressure in there. And uh, I always think about it in the fridge. I haven't done it in the fridge, but one day I was just being, you know, oh, it's just cleaning. And I forgot that the hop bottle down below was pressurized and I opened it. Unfortunately, the camera wasn't on and I copped a hop shower. <laughs> so I'll try and edit all that to make sense for you. And uh, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, share, check out my Patreon. There's always bonus videos on there. It's more behind the scenes and uh, I just give an update every week of what's going on even if I'm not doing a proper YouTube video. Alright, cheers and thanks.